Welcome to the PADEP video tutorial series on non-community water system application approvals. In this series, we will review the various components and requirements of the new approval process for non-community water systems. This video will cover Module 4, Pumping Equipment. Module 4 is intended for any non-community water system that is installing or modifying pumping equipment for their system. All pump locations, makes, models, pumping capacity, and total dynamic head should be listed in the table provided. All of this information should be available from the manufacturer specifications of the provided pump. The first field is already filled in with well pump, as the non-community water system application is only intended for systems that utilize groundwater sources. Section A is for general requirements. The proposed design of the pumps should provide a contamination-proof and frost-proof installation to ensure safe and reliable supply of water. Manufacturer specifications should be provided for the proposed pump model to include the pump curve and total dynamic head information as per the information field requirements in the previous section. This is meant to ensure that systems are using the right-sized pump for the job. Each well pump should be provided with a foot valve, or where appropriate, a priming chamber or vacuum producing device to prevent cavitation. Pump cavitation is caused by pressure drop of the water flowing through the pump and results in the formation and collapse of bubbles. This can cause damage to the pump due to excessive vibration. The pump setting and suction inlet on a screened well should be located so that the pumping level of the water cannot be drawn below the top of the screen. Water pumps are not designed to pump air, as these pumps rely on the water for cooling and lubrication. Trying to pump water beneath the level of the well screen will cause undue stress on the pump as a constant supply of water is unavailable. If the maximum suction head is to exceed 22 feet, suction lift pumps should be avoided. In a perfect vacuum at sea level, a suction lift pump could only pump water from a depth of just under 34 feet. As a perfect vacuum will not be achieved, it is recommended to use a submersible pump for these greater depths. Pressure gauges should be provided on the discharge line of all pumps to ensure the pumps are operating at the correct pressure for the system. If possible, pressure gauges should also be provided on the suction line of the pumps to ensure the pumps are operating at the correct pressure for the system. If the non-community water system does not have the ability to close, a hospital for example, Redundant pumps should be provided, as the system will need to continue operation even if the main pump becomes inoperable. Section B covers pump location. For new construction, the pump should be located outside of any pit in order to avoid a situation in which the pump may be subjected to flooding. For an existing system with an existing pump pit, the pump should be of watertight construction to avoid flooding. Pump stations should allow for convenient access to pumps for removal, repair drop pipe, and other accessories. Pumps should be mounted properly to avoid unnecessary vibration, noise, and equipment damage. Pumps, accessories, and controls should also be protected from weather-related damage. Section C covers pump controls. Controls should include pressure switches and thermal overload switches. The starting and stopping of a pump is usually controlled by the pressure switch and activated by the low cut-on pressure and deactivated by the low cut-off pressure. The thermal overload switch helps protect the motor from being damaged if the pump overheats or short circuits. If water is being pumped into a vented tank, a manual off-on auto switch should be provided, as pressure-activated switches would not work in this scenario. If water is being pumped into a pressurized system, a pressure relief valve or spring-loaded off switch should be provided. Section D covers cross-connections and interconnections. Applicants shall ensure that there are no cross-connections or interconnections between a potable water supply and any other source of water. There may be exceptions if already approved by PADEP. Water shall not be returned to the potable water supply from steam exhaust, heat pumps, or any other heat exchange devices. No plumbing fixtures shall be installed which provide an interconnection that could allow backflow of sewage or wastes into the water. The last section in Module 4 is to address all no answers in the module. If any of the questions in this module were answered no, this section must be completed to explain those no answers. Enter the question number from Module 4 and then enter the explanation or justification for selecting No. Lastly, look over the module one final time for completeness before submitting. 
If all of the questions answered with no have been addressed, check yes here. Up next in the series is Tutorial 7, which will cover Module 5, Water Storage. 